So, what are we really doing when we approximate that curve by a straight line? So, let us see. So, in general terms the equations for the circuit were V s minus V d by r equals f of V d and for the particular case of the diode this f of V d was I s exponential V d by V t minus 1. Okay. Now, let me say that the first solution or the operating point that I calculate is for V s equals V s 0. Okay. So, that means that this blue stuff here I calculated when uh, V s was equal to some value V s 0, it does not matter what it is, it is basically the first thing I calculate. So, this is V s 0 and this is V s 0 by r and this is the operating point solution or the original solution. And let me call those values as V d 0 and I d 0. Okay. So, V d 0 and I d 0 are the operating point of the diode okay. and this has to be got by nonlinear analysis. And this is of course, usually numerical okay. and let me say that at the operating point the diode voltage is V d 0, I denote it like this and the diode current is I d 0. Okay. We have taken an example earlier where if I s is 10 to the minus 15 amperes and V s is 5.7 volts and R is 5 kilo ohms. Okay. So, V d 0 turns out to be about 0.5. 716 volts and I d 0 is approximately 1 milliamp. Okay. So, this I got from numerical analysis and that is the operating point. Now, let us say that we have a different value of V s okay. and I will represent the new value of V s as V s 0 plus some lower case V s. Okay. So, that means that nu V s represented as the old value plus an increment lower case V s. Okay. I can always do this. I mean my original value of V s is 5.7 volts. If V s changes to 6.7 volts, I will say that it is 1 volt increment over 5.7 volts. Okay. I can do this for any uh, V s right? and similarly I represent every quantity in the circuit that is the actual diode voltage as the original diode voltage, the operating point diode voltage plus an increment in the diode voltage and so on. Okay. So, all quantities are represented as the original value which of course, is called the operating point plus increments over the operating point. Okay. So, now I can write my uh, equations in terms of this definitions. Okay. So, I had V s minus V d by r equals I s exponential V d by V t minus 1. Okay. The operating point of course, satisfies this equation. So, V s 0 minus V d 0 by r equals I s exponential 
V D 0 by V T minus 1 and the new value also satisfies this that is V S 0 plus V S. Okay. I am writing this V S new value as V S 0 plus an increment minus V D 0 minus V D by R equals I S exponential V D 0 plus V D by V T minus 1. Okay. Now, let me write it in uh, general terms as well not just for the diode. So, this would be in general some function of V d and this will be a function of V d 0 the operating point. So, this is the general equation and in the third case I represent the general case as the operating point plus an increment. So, I have f of V d 0 plus V d. Okay. Now, what I do is expand this in a Taylor series about the operating point. This is the significance of the operating point. I choose some operating point which is the original case for which I calculate the nonlinear solution exactly and about that operating point I expand the new case in a Taylor series. And what do I get? I will get the function at the operating point plus the first derivative calculated at the operating point times this increment V d plus higher order terms. Okay. Because I am going to neglect this, I am not including them. Okay. Now, what does this mean? We have already seen this in the graphical solution. So, let us say this is the operating point V d 0. Okay. So, the very first term here f of V d 0 is nothing but this part. Okay. This is f of V d 0 and the second term means a linear dependence on V d or increment over V d 0. So, that corresponds to this straight line that is the sum of these two terms corresponds to this straight line and then you can add higher order terms. The next one will be parabolic and the next one will be cubic and so on and if you add all of that you will get the exact nonlinearity, but we will stop here and use the straight line. Okay. So, whatever I said earlier if uh, you have not moved too far from the operating point you can use the straight line approximation and the straight line is the tangent to the curve at the operating point this is what I mean I expand the nonlinearity in a Taylor series about the operating point. And, and neglect all of the higher order terms that is second order and higher than second order terms. Okay. The Taylor series expansion goes like this right f of V d which is f of V d 0 plus the increment will be f of V d 0 plus f prime calculated V d 0 times V d plus the second derivative by 2 factorial times V d square of course, everything is calculated V d 0 and so on. Okay. Now, you can see that these terms the higher order terms reduce more rapidly with decreasing value of V d compared to the first one. Okay. So, you can always find a sufficiently small value of lower case V d the increment where these terms are negligible okay. as long as you have a smooth continuous function. Okay. So,
So, this approximation is always valid the only thing is you have to restrict the uh, range of V d over which it is valid that is all. Okay. So, now what does it mean if I neglect these okay, I will be left with this f of V d 0 and the first order dependence on this lower case V d or the incremental V d. Okay. Then what I do is I subtract the operating point from this case that is I simply take this equation and that equation and subtract. What do I get? can easily verify that we will get V s minus V d by r to be equal to f prime calculated at the operating point times V d. Okay. Now, what is the significance of this? This is linear in the increment V d. Okay. Now, there is this constant okay, that depends on the operating point, but as far as this equation is concerned that is just a constant V d is the variable and this equation is linear in V d. Okay. So, that means that it is much easier to solve than the nonlinear equation. Okay. So, for a changed value of V s we had to solve the nonlinear equation all over again. Now, we do not do that, we find the approximate solution using a linear equation. Okay. Now, that is a great simplification also because there are lots of nice techniques for uh, handling linear equations and we can use all of those things as far as the incremental quantities are concerned. Okay. Okay. So, this is the great simplification. So, in summary we first calculate the exact solution that is solution from the nonlinear equation for the operating point and that we will do numerically or graphically later we will see how to do it by hand. Then for any other value of the input okay, there can be more than one input it does not matter. You express every quantity in the circuit both inputs and internal variables as the original the operating point cases plus increments okay and then you find that wherever you have a nonlinearity you can expand it in a taylor series about the operating point and neglect higher order terms that is second and higher order terms then you will be left with a linear equation relating the increments okay so now you can use everything that you know about uh, linear circuit analysis whatever you learned in basic electrical circuits or some equivalent course to analyze nonlinear circuits as well in an approximate way okay